Hello, my name is Ilya Djekic and I come from the Faculty of Agriculture, University of Belgrade. And within this presentation, I will present some results of our research related to consumption studies and climate change. The title of our presentation is Can Food Consumption Studies Help in Modeling Climate Change? When we decide to perform consumption studies, we want to answer to some questions. The first question in focus is what is the profile of an average consumer? So we basically analyze gender, age, education and weight. In line with this, we also want to know what is the frequency of food consumption and quantities of food consumption. The second question is how can we collect the data? Basically we use questionnaires. There is a rule and guides how can we develop these questionnaires. Basically, we use the guides deployed by European Food Safety Authority. And the third uh, part of this is how can we recruit the respondents? Where can we collect the data? Finally, the last question is why do we need this? So basically, we want to understand various dietary habits. But in line with this presentation, the need for this data is to deploy various risk-based scenarios. In order to interconnect food consumption studies and climate change, we have three potential scenarios. The first scenario is to model the impact of food consumption on climate change. Second, we can model exposure assessments of food safety risks that originate from climate change. And third, we can model the effects of climate change on food consumption. To explain the first model, impact of food consumption on climate change, we will show you a case study related to consumption of dairy products. Within this case study, we performed two surveys. The first survey was focused on consumers. We analyzed consumption of milk and yogurt from citizens in Belgrade based on a seven-day recall using a Monte Carlo simulation of 100,000 iterations. In parallel, we analyzed environmental impacts that occur at farms and dairy plants that produce this milk and yogurt. Using the data from the surveys, we estimated the weekly environmental impact associated with consumption of milk and yogurt. What did we actually do? We combined the data from the consumer survey and analyzed the amount of each dairy product consumed on a weekly basis. In parallel, using the data from the dairy farms and dairy processing plants, we used the calculated emission per functional unit. We used global warming potential, ozone depletion potential, cumulative energy demand, atrification and eutrification potentials. From a life cycle assessment perspective, we used data from three subsystems, from the farms, from dairy plants and from the consumers. So in this slide, we will only show you the results for global warming potential, not for all five of the potentials we calculated. And as you can see, based on the calculations and the simulations using Monte Carlo analysis, we revealed that an average consumer of milk and yogurt is linked with 2.2 kilograms of CO2. If we further calculated for their body weight, we can see that 32.4 grams of CO2 is dedicated for each body weight of a consumer per week. To explain the second model, exposure assessment of food safety risks that origin from climate change, we used data from another case study from calculating the exposure to aflatoxin from consumption of milk and yogurt. To calculate the exposure of aflatoxin based on milk and yogurt intake, we approached students from Belgrade and based on a one day and seven day recall, we analyzed how much milk and yogurt they consume, and we calculated 
the exposure to aflatoxin based on the results of 1,793 samples that were analyzed and the concentration of aflatoxin in milk was used for our Monte Carlo simulation. To calculate the exposure assessment, we estimate the daily intake of aflatoxin using data from consumption studies, namely the quantity of milk and yogurt consumed, body weight of the consumers, and depending on the recall day, either one day or seven day recall method was used. In parallel, we use the data from the samples and uh, concentration of aflatoxin in milk. And the results show that depending on the recall method, we have slightly different values. 2.6 nanograms of aflatoxin per kilogram of body weight per day, or 1.23. And I didn't mention that this research was also performed in parallel in Greece with our Greek partners. And finally, the third scenario is Model 3, modeling effects of climate change on food consumption. We all know that climate change is basically associated with an increase of temperature. So when this outdoor temperature changes, we adjust the food intake and overall we eat less. This is something that is already well known. In parallel, some scientists develop so-called sustainable diets mainly focused on animal origin food. Why? Because they believe that if we eat less or no animal origin food, we will reduce the environmental impact of livestock sector basically associated with climate change. However, this was not fully confirmed. One of the main reasons why this was not fully confirmed is because if we change the diets by eating plant origin food, that means that we have to transfer land in favor of these products which imply changes in the application of agricultural matters and different environmental potentials. So to conclude, first we need to develop models from different data mining sources associated with data related to climate change, life cycle assessment, exposure assessment and food consumption patterns. We need to scale up these findings towards sustainable food production targeting both safe food and climate change. Finally, we believe that the focus of future research should be on understanding new consumer requirements, mixing on one side environmental climate change concerns and on the other consumer demands for healthier and natural food. So thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please drop me an email. All my contacts are here below. Thank you once again.